guys, welcome to another episode of The Latest Thread. Uh, this week, we're actually going to let you get to know us. Um, so we'll kind of start with, you know, where we live and maybe what we did before we started quilting. Okay, let's go first. Why don't you start? Me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. You can start. Uh, I live in Port St. Lucie, Florida, which is in southeastern Florida. And before I quilted, I lived in Jersey. I was born and raised in Jersey. And I was an office manager for a union electrical contractor. And I did lots of really organized brain things. <laughs> And since then, my brain has broken, and I like to be creative and not do those things anymore. So that's that. Yeah, <laughs> nothing exciting. <laughs> Sharon? Okay, so I was born in Toronto, and we moved away from there when I was probably like three or four years old, I think. And we moved to the west part of Canada <clears throat> and lived in Alberta. Yeah, I haven't lived anywhere else but Ontario and Alberta. And so I live just outside of Calgary, which is uh, right by the Rocky Mountains. And uh, so I'm, I'm about eight minutes north of Calgary in a city called Airdrie. It's just big enough to be called a city. We have a Walmart with a super center, so <laughs> it's big enough. Um, and were we talking about jobs, too? What okay. you did before quilting, yeah. What we did before quilting. So... Right out of high school, I got my hairdressing license. And um, I, I, I loved doing hair, but I hated the hair in my clothes. At, at the end of every day, <clears throat> everything just itched. And the slivers in parts of your skin that you would never expect to find somebody else's hair. <laughs> I, I basically got my license and um, <clears throat> I it was a nail tech for, for several years after that. I didn't do hair, I had my license, but um, I did nails and then I made a kind of um, spontaneous move from one city to another and completely switched careers and I went into auto body I became uh, a damage appraiser and I was an appraiser for over 20 years in Calgary and so I would just looked at banged up cars all day and uh, write estimates and um, <clears throat> when the cars came into the shop and the guys took them apart I would you know, make note of all the damage, take pictures, send them to the insurance companies. So it was a completely different world than, than quilting. Um, but quilting was my hobby. It was my mostly winter hobby because in the summer I was camping and gardening and, and stuff like that. Um, I think most quilters are gardeners too. A lot of them are anyway. No, <laughs> not this <particular. laughs> I know a lot of them are, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> and then... Um, my quilting turned into a business because I opened a quilt shop in 2007. And um, so, and, and the rest is quilting history. And we'll actually touch on how we started quilting in a bit. So, but, okay. <laughs> not, not right now, let somebody else go. <laughs> I picked Jody to go next. Thank you. No. <laughs> that has to be last. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and um, it's kind of, I mean, I've always lived in Pennsylvania, mostly. My husband was in the Air Force, so we did live in um, Little Rock, Arkansas for a year, and then we were, lived in Japan for three years. Um, but then we came back, not to the same place, because now we want to live in the country. So, I live in Enum Valley, which is right probably one mile from the border of Ohio. So it's the west side of the state. Um, and oddly, I have never even been to Philadelphia. You know, people, you meet people on tra your travels and they're like, oh, Pennsylvania. Oh, Pen uh, Philadelphia. And I'm like, oh no, never been there. Never. Let's see, being um, from Jersey, I've been to Philly a million times. <laughs> <laughs> and before I was a quilter, I... What did I do? So I worked, um, I was a front desk, nighttime kind of auditor person for a while. And um, then I worked in the finance department at a furniture store. 
And right before I quit working to quilt, I was working at an antique mall, which was kind of cool. And it was really fun. Um, although now I wish I had never worked there because I have a whole basement full of boxes of stuff that, you know, you'd get in there first and you'd walk the mall and find all the cool stuff before the employees came or the uh, customers came in. And I brought a lot of it home. So I kind of worked for stuff instead of a paycheck <laughs> and I'm not even into all that stuff anymore. It's all packed up and away. So Ava. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so I grew up in Germany. I was raised, born and raised there. And um, I met my husband. He was stationed in Germany in the army a long time ago. We did get married in Germany and had two of our kids and then moved here in 86. Here meaning Ohio. I live in Manoy, Ohio, and I've never ventured far. I lived always, you know, in this area since 86. And um, hmm, what did I do? I've had a variety of jobs, but the late, most lengthy one was a uh, restaurant manager. I've also had factory jobs and worked at Joint Fabrics for a while, worked in an office, which that was not for me. I don't like sitting, you know, for all day at the desk. That definitely was not for me. But so I had a variety of jobs before I got into quilting. Cool. See, I bet you we learned something about each other too. Totally. <laughs> So now, how did we get started quilting? Um, I don't want to go first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go backwards, Ava. You go yeah. first. Okay. <laughs> how did we get started with quilting? Um, I already said I grew up in Germany, and then I did not grow up with my family with quilting at all. I didn't know what a quilt was. But we, we did other things in regards to hobbies or crafts. I mean, my grandmother taught me how to do embroidery, um, how to knit, and she actually uh, taught me how to sew clothing on her treadle sewing machine. So that was my first exposure to sewing of any sort. So um, so no um, quilting I was exposed to. So after I had stopped working as a restaurant manager, um, for some reason, uh, I decided to stop at this shop and it was a quilt shop. And they were talking about a sit and sew, and I had no idea what the heck they were talking about. So I decided to go because I was intrigued. So I um, met some people and um, started quilting. You know, gosh, you, I didn't realize all that was involved. You had to get all this stuff, stuff. and now more and more stuff. <laughs> But so that's how I got into quilting. I made my very first quilt was a king size quilt I wanted to do for my brother and his wife when they were getting married. Quilted it on my sewing machine. Uh, that was a nightmare. They still have it. But um, I did see somebody coming in with bags and bags of finished quilts. Like, what the heck are they doing with all these quilts? And I asked someone, because I was, I had no clue. Oh, she's a long armor. A long armor? <laughs> no, what's that? You know, and so it went from there. I was intrigued again, ordered uh, my very first mid-arm, long arm, sight unseen online. It was quite inexpensive. I told my husband, I'm going to give this a whirl. I don't know what's going to happen with this. You know, there's no guarantee, but now we spend all this money. 
you know, and I practiced for about six months all on my own because that was years ago and there was no classes or anything. So, and then of course I outgrew that machine and ended up with my gamble. So that's my story. Awesome. Oh, I go? Yeah. I don't even remember now. <laughs> there's was, no, there's no order. No. Um, yeah, so I, ne yeah, I don't have anyone in my family at all. So it's not like um, I had a family of quilters and that's where I learned it. That wasn't really the case. Um, I didn't find out that people in my family actually did make a couple of quilts until after I had been quilting for quite some time. My one grandmother was a clothes sewer. Seamstress, yeah. What? No, no, it wasn't her job. But she just made some clothes. So what she made were matching Easter outfits for all of us every year. Wow. Lovely. They were just lovely. Um, and then the other thing that she, they would take us to Florida every year, right? So she would make us bathing suits. Again, all matching. And I can distinctly remember because we drove. We would be getting there. The bathing suits still were not done. She's sewing them in the car. <laughs> I don't remember wearing any of them. I don't think any ever got finished. <laughs> but that's about the only sewing there was. My other grandmother altered her own clothes, and it was to see it, to think back now, it was comical because she would be like, she'd buy something way too big and then make it fit. And it was like, why didn't you just buy the size you needed? <laughs> I, I don't know, but um, yeah, I mean, and then when we were in Japan, my mother-in-law sent me a sewing machine. It, it, you know, we lived on the off, well, we were off base, but the only place to buy fabric that I knew of was on the base. Selection was not very good. So I bought sheets and I made curtains. That was kind of my thing. So I made curtains from our apartment out of sheets, you know, because you don't even have to finish the edges if you cut right and be smart about it, right? So that was good. And then I thought I should try to make some clothes. <laughs> I don't make clothes, but I, I did. I made my husband a bathrobe. And I was so proud of it. I did a really great job. I mean, it was terry cloth. It was, it was really nice. And I remember giving it to him and I'm, and I'm like, here, I made you a bathrobe. And he looks at me like, um, I don't wear a bathrobe. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. Why did I make the bathrobe? <laughs> but anyways, I did. And then I made myself an outfit because then I had like all this confidence. Yeah, look, I can make a bathrobe. I can make an outfit. So the fabric was very limited. Yet again, I find some knit fabric in the BX. It's yellow and gray striped this way. Right. <laughs> so I make these shorts and a shirt <laughs> and I wore it and just recently I was going through old pictures and I found the pictures of myself and we need to see that picture outfit I look like a fancy convict because it's not like white and black it's gray and yellow it, it's just like oh my gosh why didn't someone say uh that's not but, <laughs> you were so confident why would anybody tell <laughs> you and I didn't make any more clothes ever. And I, to this day, that's one thing, though. That is not for me. Um, yeah, so then I didn't sew for a long time, really, after that. And then uh, my mother-in-law started to make a quilt. And she's like, you should make a quilt. And I'm like, all right, I guess. So I made the quilt, and I don't know. It was all right. I tried to quilt it. It was a log cabin quilt. And I'm like, okay, I'll just stitch it in the ditch on my domestic machine. How hard can that be? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was a nightmare. And it was a cheap, you know, sewing machine. So instead of like hopping along the seams, it would push it. You know what I mean? And every row was puckered and you couldn't adjust that. Um, so after about three, four blocks, I just tied it. And that was the last thing I attempted to quilt. And then she wanted to buy a long arm. I didn't even know what it was. And, but I, he said we could have a job with it. So I paid for half of it. And that was that. 
right. that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> I, I think we do need to have a picture in our show and tell section. Maybe. You can find one on the break of oh, inmate Joey. <laughs> From the fancy prison. <laughs> <laughs> fancy convict. So I guess we're going backwards to me then, right? Yeah. Um, so kind of like Ava, I stumbled upon a shop. Well, it there was this little um, kind of small Mennonite community about 15 minutes away from where I lived at the time in the country. And they had a... Um, a bakery and a country store that had like home knickknacks and stuff and a fabric store right beside it but it was mostly fabrics for the people there to make their own clothing so it wasn't mostly it wasn't really a quilt shop they had like one little tiny shelving unit of quilting stuff and everything else was fabrics for making the, the because the, they made their own, all their own clothes there and so I went one day, and I can't remember why, but one of the stores that I usually went to was closed, and so I thought, well, I'll just go into this other one and, and just check it out. And they had this little kit for um, a wall hanging quilt, a quilted wall hanging. So I thought, oh, what the heck? It was, I don't know, like 40 bucks or something. And I had a terrible old sewing machine that I had inherited from one of my grandmothers. And so I thought, well, I have a sewing machine. I'll just, you know, find something. Find, find a way to do this. And the, these are the days, I mean, sure we all started in the days when there was no YouTube and um, there were quilt shops, but there weren't a lot of classes being offered, I found. Like there wasn't a lot of that. There were, a lot of it was self-taught, right? So I took this thing home and I still have it and I should be sharing a picture of this, honestly, because it, it's, um, uh, paper for my very first project with no instruction from anyone. Paper piece birdhouses, applique <laughs> birds, a triple Irish watercolor chain border that all had to match up in the corners. Um, and you can literally stick your fingers into some of the holes in the seams because I didn't know what I was doing with the seam allowance and I was just, you know. <laughs> And I didn't even quilt it. You can literally take the front and the back and open it like a sack. <laughs> it's not even it's not even quilted. It's just like a bag. And then I don't even know how I managed to put the binding on. I think I sewed it on the front and flipped it to the back. And it's just a big raw edge stitched down to the back with a big flap. I had absolutely no idea, but I kept it because it's it's kind of neat to look back on that stuff and see where you came from, right? To see, yeah. you know, and, and, and even now it's a good idea to see your progress. So anyways, um, but, but I loved it regardless of how it turned out and I didn't know what it was supposed to look like or the techniques I was supposed to use. I still loved it um, and searched out other quilt shops to, and I made brag quilts for a long time. And I think that was the easiest because you didn't have to quilt them afterwards. So if you quilted the big X in the flannel square as you went, there was no muscling that big top through your, your machine when you were done. Yeah. So I didn't make anything very big. <clears throat> and if I did, it was a, a rag quilt. And, and, um, and then I, I got into the piecing, more, more into the piecing part of it. And by trial and error, I realized, okay, quarter inch seam allowance, these pieces are cut so that they're supposed to fit together. And uh, mm -hmm. I love really, really tiny piecing. I have, mm -hmm. I have quilts that I've made with thousands of pieces in them that are tiny. And I just, I love that. And so it, during that time where I, my, I would kind of transition from the rag quilting to the um, the more the intricate piecing is when um, I opened up a quilt shop in Airdrie and um, we had a long arm in the store for the last couple of years that I had the store. Um, <clears throat> the first few years we sent our quilts out to be quilted by somebody else who had a long arm and she had a gamble. And so I think that's, it was kind of like when we needed to get one, there wasn't really that's, that's the one you get because look at the wonderful job that the quilts are coming back. There was just no other alternative. Sorry, my cat is like 
trying to get into the picture and I'm shooing her tail away. <clears throat> um, and she's moving my computer around. Um, so and we had the shot for five years. We had a, a, a big economy um, crash and uh, we closed the shop at the end of our five year lease and changed the model of my business to be more um, online and home-based. So um, long arm, was long arming from home. I wasn't really into the fabric sales anymore. I just sold off what fabric I had left from the store and mm -hmm. <clears throat> continued with the long arming and teaching things like mystery quilts and piecing uh, quilt alongs online, which has been great because you, you lose the social aspect of not having a shop and you miss that the people and the interaction of <coughs> coming in for a visit. And so, <clears throat> and, um, and here I am still quilting. That was what you needed us to say, right? <laughs> was how we got into quilting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there was nobody else in my family that quilted. Like my mom learned to quilt from me. So like Jody and Ava, both of you said you didn't have anybody that taught you in your family. And usually you have like a mom or an aunt or a grandma that hands down this tradition and you learn to quilt from your mom or your grandma. And, and we didn't have that. I think my mom made a pair of oven mitts and a Christmas stocking one year. But other than that, and I think self-taught is good. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes it's your personality type too. It's like, no, I'm going to figure this out. And Definitely. So um, my mom actually sewed clothes and all my Barbies got matching outfits to what my mother was making. So oh, cute. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have all her scraps. She'd make Barbie clothes. But um, she did not quilt. And I say I'm an accidental quilter because we moved to Florida and we bought a house. And three days into buying, the, you know, into after we closed, we went and got appliances. And I told my husband, oh, switch out the dishwasher. So he takes the dishwasher out and the entire wall fell in with it from the outside because our house was infested with termites. Mm -hmm. And... Um, well, four or five months into our house adventure of replacing walls and lots of construction, my mother-in-law came over and said, hey, the quilt shop's having a block of the month. We should join. And I said, what is a block of the month? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a kitchen exterior wall. You want me to go get a block of the month? <laughs> <laughs> So I said, I, I don't want to do this. She said, well, just come for the ride. I'm like, I don't want to go. I just, there's more things to do than go buy this thing. Because I don't even know what, essentially what quilting is at this point. So she finally convinces me on the way there. She goes, well, do you have your $5? And I'm like, why do you want me to pay for this? <laughs> so anyway, she bought my first block of the month. We came home and she's very, um, anal and meticulous and I am nothing like that. So she takes her little pieces and she washes them, wrings them out. Oh. <laughs> I'm oh. like, yeah, this is not for me. I'm not doing that. I don't care if it runs. I'm not doing anything with this ever. This is just so you shut up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I pieced the first block and it was like an instant addiction at that point. I said, I want to go get the next one. And she says, we well, have to wait till next month. I mean, I've only had it two hours and I want to go to my next one. <laughs> Just a little of the OCD there. It's like compulsive, you know, got to do it now. So we went back to the quilt shop and I bought two patterns and I made them over the weekend. And then I pieced my first quilt the first week. And then I said, well, what do I do now? We have to quilt it now. <laughs> so um, two quilts in on my domestic, I had taped my quilt to the floor, you know, moved all the furniture, taped it out the floor, was pinning away. And at that point we had a Mastiff and a Bull Mastiff. Okay. So UPS comes and goes, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. And the two dogs come running, rip the whole quilt off the floor. And I cried to my husband that I needed a machine. I need one of those things. <laughs> so um, I did have a part-time job. Yeah, I don't do anything half. You know, just started quilting, already got a job at the quilt shop doing their newsletter working in, you know, website and newsletter. But um, I said, I need one of those machines. He says, oh, what are you going to do with a machine? Where are you going to put it? You know, so I'm, I'm <laughs> working on the newsletter for the quilt shop. And she's like, hey, let's start, list the classic plus for sale in the newsletter. 
And I went, whoop, for sale? What? <laughs> so, yeah, I said, can you give me a couple days to see if I can, you know, come up with money before we list it in the newsletter? She said, sure. So, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's had a lot of changes since then. So, yeah, that's, and then I got that and I did my first custom quilt within two weeks. So, that's my accidental quilting story. All because of that stupid block of the month. And now I hate piecing. I just piece with <laughs> when I have to. Because <laughs> the, the long arm is instant gratification. You know, yep. like you put the fabric up, you quilt, done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't hate piecing. I shouldn't say that. But I, I only piece when I have to. There's yeah. some of those projects that are, that are nice to have that you whip them together really fast and you get that sense of gratification. But I also like to have one or two projects on the go that are like maybe five-year projects. And when they're done, they're, they're the wow factor that I, it's not about other people. It's about, it's about me looking at it and going, you know, so that's a different sense of accomplishment. Yeah. That it's, I, I find really worthwhile. And well, in case you in case you can't tell, I don't, I'm not real accurate. Okay. <laughs> so like when I'm piecing, I, I don't rip it out. If it doesn't match up, I'm fine. You know, unless it's for, you know, competition or something. But even then I prefer to applique because I can fudge more things with applique than like when you're piecing and those two points don't match up. Ugh. But when you're appliqueing, you can kind of force it to match up. So, <laughs> yeah. Does anybody want to add anything? Yeah, no. All right. So I think we're going to take a little break. And when we come back, you're going to get a peek into our lives with hobby wise, what we like to do when we're not quilting. Hi, this is Michelle from Gamble. One of the calls that we commonly get at Statler Tech Support is from quilters whose laser seems to have mysteriously died. I'm going to show you a couple quick things that you can check. First of all, make sure that your laser is on in your CS software. Uh, over on your head, there's a few things that you can check. Up top, especially if you've cleaned recently, make sure that this plug is in tight and that this knob is turned all the way to the right. This is, knob is actually a dimmer switch for your laser, and it can actually turn your laser off if you rub it the wrong way and turn it. Uh, the last thing to check is the end of your laser itself. There's a pinhole where the laser comes out, and that can get packed with lint. So use some canned air or the tip of a needle to clean that out and make sure you get that lint out of there. That's probably going to resolve your problem, but if not, give us a call at Statler Tech Support. Welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little break. And in, while we were on break, Jody went and found her, her fancy convict outfit. So she's going to share that picture real fast. <laughs> they made me find my fancy convict. Can you see it? It oh, is. There were pants, too. <laughs> Luckily, the pants are not in the picture. <laughs> That's not that bad. It looks very nice. Mm -hmm. You make the I best. I still have it. Would you like me to send it to you? No, I don't. <laughs> I actually, I forgot, I used to make my kids the Halloween outfits. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And the one year my youngest changed his mind two days before Halloween as to what he wanted to be. And he insisted now that he was going to be the white Power Ranger. So I'm scrambling because the white Power Ranger sported a gold you know, trim. And so I ended up trying to find gold lame, and that's so much fun to work with. You know, oh, yeah. like he was a white Power Ranger, but <laughs> within two days. And I think that's the last year I made costumes. He broke it, right? <laughs> he but he still remembers that outfit. We just talked about it the other day. I said, you remember what I did for you? <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, that was cool. I said, I know. <laughs> See all the memories you made for them? <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's truly, you think eh, I didn't mean anything, but they actually, well, two out of my three kids seem to have a better memory than the other one, but yeah. 
<laughs> That's how it always works. <laughs> <coughs> all right so Sharon you have some pictures yes I have all everyone's pictures here let me do a one second and I will share my screen I wanted to do this because some people think all we do is quilt but we do other things almost almost all we do almost <laughs> hey I can either share screen or I can share just photos let me try that out there we go. Can you guys see the pictures? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're not in order. You didn't say what order to put them in, my dear. Ah. Well, one Jody was the only hobbies, one that did that. <laughs> one oh. of my hobbies, and this is actually a two part hobby, is well, number one, grandchildren. I have seven and three quarters, one to come next week. <laughs> So close enough. But these four are living in a suburb of Seattle. And so go out there a couple, two, three times a year um, if there's not a pandemic happening at the time. <laughs> and so I really enjoy my time with the grandkids and we go on little trips. And so that's one of those that's Lake Minachi. Um, in New York, I mean in Seattle. So, yep, grandkids are one of my hobbies. And more grandkids, but um, Madison plays softball. She's a catcher. And I enjoy nothing more than after working in the basement on quilts all day to go out uh, in the evening and go watch her play softball. And again, this is from um, last year because no softball this year. And then, of course, Aiden, the grandson, he plays um, baseball. So actually, all three of my grandkids here now play baseball slash softball. And it's especially fun when they all three have a game on the same night at the same time. <laughs> so I tried to be the fair grandma. Luckily, they all played in the same town. So Logan, the youngest, he plays t-ball. So his game is the shortest. So I tried to at least go to half, then go to Madison's because hers is the next <coughs> longest. And then I finished out the night watching Aiden play his game. So fun times, super great. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, I guess he's not a hobby, but he's my <laughs> husband. <laughs> <laughs> and so we do enjoy uh, he's an over the road truck driver so we do literally don't get to spend much time together he's usually gone about two months at a time and so I guess he could be a hobby um, at this point <laughs> but, <laughs> but well that's reality but you know we do enjoy spending time together when he's home and going on trips whenever possible so where's this one taken actually that is in um leavenworth we were staying at a hotel up there in leavenworth washington and that was the balcony that was actually last august And one of my most favorite hobbies is traveling. And so this was taken in Germany last year. My husband and I went um, for my mother's 80th birthday and we were doing some sightseeing. One of my other hobbies is taking pictures. And I thought this was a really cool one of this particular castle. Mm -hmm. I love the colors of the leaves. Yeah, it was perfect. And just another pic. I thought that was so cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, we went in my mother's birthday's uh, mid-October. 
So obviously, you know, that was a great time to go. The weather was still nice, but uh, leaves sure had changed and it was just just beautiful everywhere. Germany, you know, I said earlier, that's where I was born and raised. So my family is um, there. My parents are still both living and I have two brothers and their families there. So, um, but it's so pretty, you know, I mean, if you look at that, the pretty flower baskets in the window, it's just a very, for the most part, um, a very pretty place. Oh. And one of the things when I when I go places and look around, take pictures, I always look for some, you know, designs, you know. So, you know, as a quilter, you always try to find inspiration. And that actually reminded me, it looked like a clamshell design, mm -hmm. you know. It was the door in the, we were up at a, yet another castle and that, that, um, or separated the gardens, you know, to where you actually went into the castle. And it just, I thought that looked pretty cool, like a clamshell design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love food. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it a hobby? Should it be a hobby? <laughs> Probably not. But in fact, it is. And so, this was a you know, still from Germany, schnitzel, french fries, and a nice salad. I think it's a well-balanced meal. And we, of course, had a glass of beer to go with it, which made it well-rounded. But, yeah. And to me, and again, and I, maybe it's because I'm now a quilter, but to me, part of the food is the way it's presented. And I think this is a good example. You have the color theme, you know, the pretty... Uh, salad with all the different colors it just looks appealing and that's part of my problem with food when it's presented <laughs> in an appealing manner there is no helping me <laughs> so yeah. food is yes indeed part of my hobbies <laughs> And again, photography, you know, we are so lucky with the digital cameras, you know, when, when it picks up or even just your, your smartphone, you know, it picks up so much detail. And just the colors is, again, you know, you can look at something in nature and it can give you inspiration, you know, for choosing colors for your quilts because, you know, of, you know, your fabrics, because you see it right in front of you, you know, so inspiration is everywhere. And if you, you know, just look around, you can capture some of that. Do I actually do something with that in making quilts? No, but I enjoy looking through the pictures, you know, so I love taking pictures. And yet again, another inspiration. Um, I mean, that's everywhere. I mm -hmm. thought that was very cool, you know, and you have the Greek key kind of design on the outside. And then, of course, the inside is definitely just a very simple, you know, design that can be done as a, you know, continuous quilting design. Yeah, and, you know, we as educators were pretty lucky last year, you know, to go to a lot of different places. And I think the reason why I chose this picture, and I know Sharon probably remembers where that was at because she was with me when I took it. Uh, we were lucky enough to be able to drive from Las Vegas to um, Arizona. And on the way, we had just enough time to spend like two, three hours at the Grand Canyon and I had never been to many places around the United States. And so I was just in awe, you know, at all the beauty, you know, that that's right here, you know. So that was one of my favorites to, to see the Grand Canyon. I love to travel. And I'm going to miss doing that this year, the way it looks. Just shorter trips from the kitchen to the living room. <laughs> Much shorter. <laughs> that just, you know, yeah. Um, so this is my one and only hobby. 
because there just isn't time for anything else. So I just like to ride my quad as much as I can. Um, yeah. And sadly, it hasn't even started this year because of all of this stuff. But I don't get it because I am not anywhere near anybody when I'm doing it, you know. But whatever. And this is my quad. So I, when, it, when I started doing this, um, my husband had always ridden things, motorcycles, three-wheelers, all of that. And then, you know, I think people go in phases. So he decided he's going to get a quad. And I'm like, eh, whatever. I had never ridden anything. that I just had never done any of that. And we go on these couple of trips and I'm riding on the back and it was like, this sucks. <laughs> I mean, you're just bouncing around back there. I can't even see where we're going. You know, you have a stiff neck cause you're trying to look past the other person. And I'm like, yeah, this isn't for me unless I can have my own. And, um, you know, quilting, which way, way back when was my hobby now was my job and it paid for, <laughs> my hobby. Mm -hmm. So I saved up teaching money and I like gray. So I was having a gray quad and it took me a while to find the right one. And that's it. So I'm happy camper. And so my big thing is the stickers. Like I'm someone who would never, like I would never put a bumper sticker on my car. Like I just don't get it. Like, what? I'm going to be sticking that on my car. But my helmet is like my, I have stickers from every single place I've ever gone. But the problem is I'm almost out of room. So I don't, I don't know what to do, but I'll figure that out. I just need to be able to go some more places. <laughs> so this was the coolest thing about, so generally we, in Pennsylvania, there are only a handful of places where you can actually ride it's yeah kind of sucks you have to load them up and take them wherever you want to go but um last year my husband his and his dad were going to drive to Colorado so they could actually take um the quads out there and yes i admit i flew there and met them because i was not driving all the way out there so i flew out and met them and we got to ride there and so kind of what what i found out was that it's I'm not a hiker. Yes, I'll go on a relatively short hike. There has to be something at the end. I'm hiking to something, like a destination or a site. I'm not like one to just go walk around out there for no reason. But with the quad, you can go places that I would never be able to hike that far, ever. Um, and you can see more things in one day. So it was kind of cool. And my son lives out there, so he went with us. And we, you know, you can switch that. So there we are. You know, you get up into places that you, I would have never been able to hike all the way up where we were up there. Um, it, was, it was pretty cool. And then in the next picture, I mean, you come across all these just ghost towns that, again, I wouldn't just be walking around miles into the mountains to come upon it. But, you know, we got to see things that I would have not seen otherwise because you can't drive your car there. I think that's it, isn't it? Oh, and then this one. So now for me, every time I go somewhere, well, I want to ride there too. Um <laughs> So the only sad part about it is that this was in Utah and when you go and rent them somewhere, they give you these side by sides, which I know a lot of people love them. It's not for me. I don't want to be a passenger. I, because the, my, the thing that, the reason I love the hobby is because you are on your thing. You are riding, you have your helmet on, you hear nothing. You're just you inside your own head, I guess, you know what I mean? And you're just, you know, looking at the nature, I guess. I don't know. So it's cool to try all these other places, but 
So that's all I do other than quilting, sadly. <laughs> um, I am also, a, I wouldn't say a photographer. I call myself a photo junkie, but I love nature. And like, I have no problem going on a walk and like getting down on the ground to get those pictures like that. So <laughs> where I, is that? That's in Roatan. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was when we were on the first cruise. Mm -hmm. but he was really cool. He followed us around. I think he thought, How like, big is that guy? Uh -huh. How big How is, big is like, that guy? One and a half feet long. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But he was like following us around. I think because they feed him lettuce. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he thought like, hey, people have lettuce. <laughs> but they were everywhere. That was just one of the really colorful ones. Mm -hmm. And spiders. This is just a regular walk. It's when we were, going, we were going fishing, and you'll see that later. But these are banana spiders, and they're like this big. But when you're fishing, they go from tree to tree above you. You know, when you're out in the woods, not just fishing, but if you're walking down a path. But there's, their webs are amazing. They're actually called... Um, Golden orb weavers, I think, is their real name. <laughs> but yeah, I like the webs just as much as the spiders, but they have really cool markings. So. Mm -hmm. Lizard, he's in the Aww. backyard. <laughs> so yeah, that's, yeah, I don't know. I just love, like that, there's the same thing like Ava was saying, all that texture on the back of that lizard on his scales. It's just, that, that amazes me. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is out in the front yard. These are these little bugs that we get. We get them. I don't know what they are, but their bodies are kind of black and furry with white spots, and their wings are like red and purple. They look like a, a sort of like a moth. No, mm -hmm. it's more. Like, well, like moth. It's like half moth, half bee, because it looks like he would sting you. Oh, <laughs> do they bite? I, I don't want to get that close. This is as close as I got because it had just rained, and he was trying to like dry his wings. So maybe they are mothish. But he was sitting down on the grass, so I got right down there, and I'm like, Tch. and it, this is one of my favorite pictures because it just came out so cool. Well, look at the gorgeous color on the wings as it gets mm -hmm. towards the tip. Mm -hmm. It changes. It's beautiful. Yeah. You only see them for like three, four days, and then they're gone. Oh. Mm. They're migrating or something? Yeah, I don't know. But that oh. was, I should research it. Mm. Oh. <laughs> And this, we took a, um, my art group took a day trip to the botanical gardens and they're all looking at the flowers and this and that. I'm like, look at that single little palm all by itself. But I liked how the light was coming through from behind the tree on it. So I thought that was really cool. And this is our main hobby in this house is fishing. So these are two flounders. I think this was like Christmas Eve. But in that was shorts. Dinner. Yeah, it's very Christmassy, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the outfit. <laughs> but do you eat the flounder? A flounder? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We eat a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of fish. So. Now you know how to clean them and and prepare them for. Cooking. I know how to clean them. I don't choose to do it. Joe does that because I want to eat fast. If I did it, I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that fillet again. The fillets would be all like that straight. Sounds very it's believable. Great. It really mm -hmm. does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and see now I'm craving that. And this is a largemouth bass. This is right around the corner from my house. And we just go fishing. And you got to watch for gators here. There's a lot of gators, but it's like a hill. So you stand at the top of the hill and, and fish from there. And they'll just come swimming by. The gators, not the fish. You got to hunt the fish. <laughs> Now you got your own tackle box with all the different attachments for the no, different type have of a tackle box. I just take what I want from it. I have my own pole and my own reels. Yeah. Oh, I've never fished ever. Oh, well, I'm finicky. Like I don't, I don't like a bouncy pole. It's weird. And until you fish, you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand that. But if your pole's too bouncy, it's like every little wind feels like a fish. Mm. I've attached you. worms. Huh? I'm surprised you like that because that is a patience thing. This is weird <laughs> because it is a patience thing. And I have like this much patience. Okay, <laughs> But I don't know. 
I think it's because I know that if I'm patient and I wait, I'll get a fish. You get to eat the prize. I get the prize. <laughs> yeah, so it's a competition. It's not patience. Yeah. So that's yeah. why. <laughs> I, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's only it's only that pur purposeful patience so that I get I get to win. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, I doodle and I doodle a lot. So this is. Um, there's like two main doodle notebooks that float around the house, but, and like, I won't, this one took like three or four days to finish because I don't just scribble it out. I want it to look pretty. It is very pretty. Well, I laugh because, well, like a Zentangle, that's so big right now, this Zentangle. And I think it's just um, a coin word or whatever you want to call it, because I've been doodling like this since high school. And I don't think we had Zentangle when I was in high school. But this is how all my book covers looked. Yeah. But again, that takes patience too because it's a very detailed. So well, I you think can it's like, be patient depending on what you're doing. Yeah, it's called hyper focus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, depending on. What, to, sorry, go ahead. No, it's, I was just agreeing with Ava. It's, it is depending on what I'm doing because if I had to sit and wait for somebody, I'd. Be, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but if I start doodling, oh look, twenty minutes have gone by. <laughs> So are you, are you drafting something out in pencil first and then going back in with a marker or are you just going right into it with a... Go right in with a marker. That was marker. a Sharpie. Which it, and this notebook, I don't actually... This is more of a pencil notebook because it's, um, it's not real smooth. Like I love the pencil on it because it makes that sound. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> the sketching papers. Yeah. Sketching paper. But so a little bit more rough. Mm -hmm. It's what was in front of me. So yeah, you don't have to have a perfect sketchbook to sketch. You yeah, can. you could anything that sits still long enough, you can doodle on. Yeah, <laughs> and that's another one. That's an old one. But. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of a quilt that you made. Mm -hmm. I have a quilt that's totally inked. It's called Down the Rabbit Hole. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I recognize some of the elements from that. Yeah, and I really like how the hooks. Can you see my cursor over the screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, look at these hooks. It's so dimensional. Oh, yeah. How they wrap around the yeah. straight ones. And it's so, it, that's so important. To, I mean, your, your doodling is one dimensional, but you can make it really look 3D mm -hmm. with a few tricks like that. And yep. that, that's important to play and around you, because you can do that in your quilting. You can do this, like, that's what I said. Not, not everything you doodle can be continuously quilted but you can quilt just about anything you doodle just not continuous yeah <laughs> and this is this is my zen place like some people get aggravated and frustrated and they go for a run i go float in the pool like don't talk to me i'm in my own head boom yeah just float in the pool that's my quiet place <laughs> Oh, this is me and my, my girl. So, um, yeah, family is, family is a big part of my passion hobby, just like everyone else who's spending time. And we love going for walks. We go for, for walks at least once, sometimes twice a day. And there's a little, little lake right there. It's three minutes from our house and we can just, you know, go for walks. And she is, uh, 12 now and behaves much older <laughs> <laughs> and this is my stepdaughter Janae with her and this little container that they're so proudly holding we like to do some geocaching when you go find the things yeah yeah, yeah. so we have the little app on my phone and they walk around oh there's a geo so we'll sometimes just take an entire day and wherever the app leads us, that's where we go. And sometimes we're out of town. Sometimes we stay in town. And uh, it, like, it really isn't about the little things because the knickknacks in the boxes, isn't, they're nothing really that special. Mm -hmm. But they really love the whole experience of finding it. And some of the things are like there's clues and you have to solve a puzzle to figure out where the geocache is. So they really like that aspect of it and I find it fun sometimes I just sit in the van and okay you guys go and I'll just wait here and sometimes I treasure out there with them as well but it's fun 
And this is my boy, Stylus, and he comes on all of our walks with us. And if I say that too loudly, he'll think it's time to go. <laughs> um, and so we try to go to the off-leash parks as much as possible because he's just such a big dog. He's like 95 pounds, and he walks me. So I, I'd rather take him to – I think the dog walks is about the dog. I think they need to be out there smelling stuff and interacting with other dogs and learning how to approach other people and things like that. So I don't like yanking on a dog's leash the whole time. I want to just see him run around and, and have fun. And of course, Snapchat. <laughs> Snapchat just uh, it makes him look like a puppy. Yeah. And so yeah. So I had to do that one because he's just so cute. Yes, filters work on all animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and speaking of Snapchat, I'm sharing this here because my husband might not ever see it. So that's probably the only way. He hates it when I take pictures of us in Snapchat, and you can tell by the expression of his face because. Um, it puts makeup on the guys. Mm -hmm. So his, his look is like, mm. yeah. <laughs> but I can definitely say he's my hobby. I love spending time with him and we work together 24 seven, unless I'm traveling somewhere to teach. We, he, he quilts at home as well. And so we're together yeah. all the time. And, um, it was interesting because when we, um, uh, it wasn't first marriage for us and uh, second for both of us. And um, we both had our serious hobbies. Like I was, I was still, quilting was my business, but it was still, I still felt like it was my hobby still. And he had his own business, which, or not business, he had his own hobby as well. And so he was like, great, I got a girl that has her own hobby. And then the more I quilted as a business, the less I wanted to do it as, as a hobby. And then I would be relying on him for my hobby time. So let's do something together. And so I ended up having to take up another hobby once my quilting got to the point where I don't want to do this for 16 hours a day. I want to do this for six to eight hours a day or 10 hours a day. And then I want to do something else. And um, I tried a few different things. Like what I wanted to do as a hobby was I wanted it to be creative, but I also didn't want it to be something that was going to take a long time for me to master a skill. So I, I took up cross stitching and painting and a few other things that I just felt like I just don't want to spend time developing a skill. I just want to do something. So this is diamond painting and um, <clears throat> this one that I've recently released and, uh, or finished and they're um, just tiny little, I have a better picture of it close up. They're just tiny little gems. They're literally like, an eighth of an inch less, less than an eighth of an inch big, the tiny little pieces, and you stick them on sticky paper to make these designs. Um, that's another one that I just finished. And that one, it says 65 by 40, but that's centimeters, I believe. So this one's probably like 20 inches by 30 inches long. And I love steampunk. So I... And, and you can, you can um, send pictures in of whatever you want and they'll send you a kit to build it. So you can send in a picture of your dog or, you know, uh, your parents or whatever, and they'll send you a kit to make it. And uh, yeah, with all of the, so it's just like pixels. This is the one that I'm working on now. And it comes in this big sheet like that, that you peel off in little sections as you go. And um, <clears throat> as you peel off the whole paper, then it's all sticky and you get dust and things all over it. So you just peel off a small section. I, I work on about the size of my hand at one time. So this one is the start of um, a big dragon eye, and I'll show you that. And they're just, these are the little uh, stones. And you pick up uh, a little bit of wax on the end of your pen that has a little hole in the end, and you just literally sit and pick them up and place them down onto the legend that's on the paper. So they all correspond to a color that you use. So for me, it's, it's, it's creative by making something, but it's not something that I had to really learn how to do. It's creative, but it's not consuming that way. So, and it's kind of mindless once you get going. So I listen to podcasts and, do other things like crystal cross stitch. Yes, 
<laughs> yes, so it's like cross stitch, but if you if you screw up, it's not near as noticeable, and you don't have to do a bunch of un uh, uncross stitching. Yes, <laughs> and uh, yeah, kind of fun. And I think I haven't got any frames, but I think that's the goal is that I will frame it. So this yeah, is what I'm working on right now. Go ahead. Very cool. Oh, I was cool. looking before. I'm like, how do you know where to put them? It's all just white paper. But when you peel yeah. it off, there's a little key. Okay. Yeah. It, there's a full legend. And so it, I mean, I, I have it all down to a little science where I have them all in little containers with labels on them. Mm -hmm. And um, very cool. Yeah, very cool. I quite enjoy doing that. So that's, that's the one I'm, I'm working on now. And I think that is, I think that's all our pictures. Okay. It is. Yeah, so I'll just stop there. There we go. All righty. Well, that was fun. I think this was hmm, a lot of fun. I mean, we all know each other. We travel together. We work together. But I think we all learned a little something about each other more than we knew. So, for sure. Yeah. And I, I think that's about it for this week's uh, latest thread. And remember, always, um, if you have any comments on anything, just ha uh, hashtag the latest thread in any of the Gamble groups. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.